All right, so we created the account, the Tumblr account, a moment ago, and it's going to perhaps remind you of some things such as uh, you need to verify your email address. That's just so that you can have the full features of Tumblr. If you haven't done it at this point, that's fine. We can do it later. But just be mindful that if you want to use the full features of Tumblr, you want to log into your email and click the link that says Welcome to Tumblr. What's also going to happen when you're a beginner especially, and this will get annoying quickly, is that these things are going to pop up to tell you, to teach you about Tumblr. So for me, you might see something else, but for me it popped up here, keep exploring. Follow this compass into the wider world of Tumblr. Stuff that we like, stuff that we think you'll like, and stuff that'll help you get your bearings here. I'll never be bored again. This is just their fun way of clicking OK. Yes? On the very bottom right, I think it says something like "Let's go" or "Do it" or something like that. I was looking. Uh, it just says "Welcome to Tumblr" and follow five plus blogs to get started. And I've already I've selected one. I, I can follow. It might be more fun. I can follow. Yeah. So just click. Yeah. That's the way. Okay, so now it popped up with another helpful new user tip for me. If yours are different, that's fine. Mine says, looking for something specific, here's a field for you to type that specific thing into, anything you can think of. And it says, maybe I'll do it, which is just click OK. So uh, we've got search. This search is Tumblr. This is searching throughout Tumblr to find content, and not the wider web but it's got hundreds of millions of users so we can potentially find what we want and people can find me through search. Now here's another pop-up. Make some posts. There are seven post types. That should cover it. Yeah. So it's just kind of popping up as a beginner to, to tell you you've got these different kinds of posts that you can make so click yeah. And it's gonna keep popping up. Just take a quick read and then close it. But um, because I did follow five accounts, some of their stuff shows up here. If nothing shows up, that's okay. But these are the posts of the accounts that I followed. Let's um, look on the top right corner. You've got a little house, which is the dashboard. That's the main screen. So you're going to see aspects of Tumblr that are a lot like a social network. Um, so if I'm following accounts, their posts will show up in my dashboard, this home screen, and it says one new thing has been published. You might see that, you might not, that's okay, but it shows that there's something brand new that's been published here from Sweet Tooth Girl. This make your own pumpkin butter cups. Pretty cool. So next to that, then we've got dash. Uh, we've got explore, little compass. Click on that explore button, that little compass. Because you're brand new to Tumblr, this this screen might not be the most useful to you yet. Explore is for you to find more things on Tumblr to get inspired by, to share, and then eventually your own stuff could show up here as you build a presence. But here it's telling me some of these interesting posts that have appeared on Tumblr. Uh, blogs that are trending. Searches. These are what people are searching for. This is for inspiration. What if I can post stuff related to these tags, to these concepts? I've got this bakery. And none of them really apply. Well, maybe chemistry. So maybe I can think about posting something about the chemical reactions of butter in my butter cookies and, and tag it with chemistry. Because at the moment, chemistry seems to be trending. It's not huh, that's true. It, it might be random to some degree, but um, 
it's not going to be completely out of date content. I think you'll see the date if you click on the notes. This one's got 1400 notes, uh, maybe. Yeah, it doesn't seem quite obvious how new is this content. At the top, you've got recommended for you trending, staff picks, stuff about text, photos, GIFs, quotes, asks. So let's say I just want to see links. What are people? What's trending? What's popular re regarding links at the moment? And that's based on your preferences, the bulk preferences. To some degree, because but because it's so new, it might not be so accurate. So as you use Tumblr more, then it should get smarter about showing you stuff that you will really care about. So this is something pretty unique on Tumblr. Um, we, as I said a moment ago, we have the ability for people to submit to help us post stuff on Tumblr. The culture of Tumblr at the moment is more toward a younger demographic. I believe you have to be at least 13 to use Tumblr, maybe a little older, but really let's say between 13 and like 25 is the biggest demographic. It still of course goes older than that. But if your product or your brand or your website is targeting a young audience, quote unquote young, let's just say under 30, which may or may not really be a good definition, but um, if that's what you're going for, then you might be able to find an audience pretty well on Tumblr. It has been traditionally been young. And so part of the uniqueness is that people can, can help you grow your blog. We'll see how to do that. The other thing that's unique to Tumblr is that you can ask questions on Tumblr and people can then answer and that bring that creates the uh, social interactions. Here I'm still looking at the explore and one of the things that I can explore at the very end is asks. This will show you Tumblr blogs hopefully based on what you care about where people are asking questions. This is a tactic to get traffic. If you Take my social media class, however, I talk in there that if, if I just set up a Twitter account and I expect to get 100 followers quickly, that's not going to happen until I accomplish several things first. One of the things is, well, I need to update my profile and add content to entice people to follow me on Twitter. People are not going to follow a Twitter account with no tweets, with the generic Twitter logo, um, and no biography. Same thing on Tumblr. So if I'm trying to get traffic and use to my Tumblr blog right now, it's not going to work. I have nothing to offer people to, to follow or to care. So we'll, we'll come back to this, but if we had our profile filled out, and if we had a few posts that represent what my blog is about, I could come back to the, to the Explore and go to Asks and answer the questions that people are asking then that could bring traffic back to my site and maybe I can get readers for my site, follow up, followers for my site. And so going in on the conversation of questions, I can answer these questions and get traffic to my site. Is there any way to filter what kind of questions show, or is it just whatever pops up? Let me confirm. I'm going to search cookies here, and then let's see if I can specifically filter that into asks. No, it doesn't seem like it. I search for cookies, which is a filter that I care about, but then I switch to asks, and then no, then it just shows me everything that's asks. So I can't quite filter it that way.
But you saw you saw what I did there a moment ago. So this is going to be recommended for you, but the algorithm at the moment is not smart enough to really know exactly what you care about. So let's take a moment to do this. Let's go to the search box up here and type a keyword or two or a sentence actually about what your company is about, what you what your product is, what you're trying to blog about. So let's say I'm gonna search cookie and as I start typing it might suggest cookie, cookies, chocolate chip cookies. It might even also suggest particular companies or blog blogs that are, that is that have the term cookie somewhere in their blog name. So that's a possibility also if I'm Victor's Bakery, but maybe I make a blog, a Tumblr blog, Victor's Cookie Palace.tumblr.com. If I really got if I really want to get found by a particular keyword, it would show up there. So I'm just going to search for cookie recipes. So I see blogs that have that keyword. I see actual posts. Nutella stuffed chocolate chip cookies, for example. And I see that's got 432 notes. This one's got 346, 165. So if I can search through Tumblr to find blog posts on a particular topic, anyone else can, everyone else does. And so think about it in, in terms of, I'm going to post stuff to Tumblr, I'm going to think about it a little bit more as a social network rather than as a full featured blog platform like WordPress. I'm not going to write a hundred words. I'm going to add a picture or a video or a link or something, a little teaser of it, and most of these, if I click, they're going to take me back to the original website. This one is going over to whatsgabbycooking.com. So just a teaser, double chocolate chip almond caramel cookies. Okay, I see the picture, I'm enticed. I click, and then that takes me back to whatsgabbycooking.com, where I have the full website, where I can maybe subscribe here, it says never miss another recipe, subscribe, where I can read the whole post, maybe click, accidentally click on an ad and make money for them, maybe I can uh, read the whole recipe, It's really such a it's really such a gray area. Like let's say that on Tumblr they posted the full recipe. I can easily share it because it's on Tumblr. If though I first go to their website and then share it from their website, that may or may not be okay. What will be worse is if I go to their website and I copy the text and then paste it into my blog post with no link, no attribution, back to the original. That's the worst. But for me to simply share here on Tumblr, that's like 99% okay. To go to their website, and if they have a, a, a link that says share on Tumblr, that's 95% okay. But if I take their, their stuff, copy and paste it with no link back to their original, that's 100% not okay. So as long as it's part of already the network, I can reshare it. Say that again.
approach that's cheap for them, or would you like? The easiest way would be. I already see it on Tumblr here, so I just click the reshare button. That's the easiest way. And that copies it completely. Well, let me get back to that because we've got a, a, a sequence that we're going to go through. So if I can search for stuff, people can search for my stuff too. Um, I haven't posted anything on Tumblr, so there's really no nothing of my content that could be shared just yet. We'll share content in just a moment. We're still kind of getting our minds wrapped around, well, what is Tumblr? So whatever we're doing here, let's move on now. We'll get back to search, of course, but uh, on the top right corner, we have a few more icons. We have that little envelope, which is messages. So again, really have a lot of aspects of social networks. I haven't gotten any messages, but they would be listed there. Got the little lightning bolt, which uh, which are the uh, activity, the notifications. Right here, what would happen is this is where it would tell me, you got a new follower, um, you got a new question, you got a comment on your post. So that little lightning bolt is the activity, and when something updates, then it'll show you right there. When you get new followers, new likes, etc. Mine is empty because I have nothing to share, nothing to contribute, and no one knows about my blog. And the last one here, the account. Let's go ahead and click on account. Click on that little person. There's your logout button if you want to log out. Your list of what you've liked, who you are following, settings, and other things. I've got this blog at the moment. When I created it, I've got, Vic I've got victorsbakeryuniverse.tumblr.com. And here I can, it'll show me how many posts I've made, how many followers I have, and so forth. Well, we've created this blog post, and Tumblr makes it easy. I mean, we've created this blog account. And Tumblr makes it pretty easy to get started with an account, but I think they, they should do a better job with kind of explaining, well, you've got this you've got this blog and now let's let's set it up nicely and let's use it. So let's try this. When you clicked on your your user icon here, then click on the name of your blog right there. And so everything that you have posted will be found here, and I haven't posted anything. So let's post one thing, our introductory, our introductory post, and then we'll look at some other things. But make sure you're on this screen. And at the top we have the ability to make these different kinds of posts. We'll just start with a basic text post. So click on text. We have the ability to style our post text not as much as WordPress, but we have bold and linking and all of that stuff, bullet points. And it's telling you here on the right side, perhaps, if you want to style text, you have to select it first. It might also pop up to tell you, well, you can in also insert, even though I've selected to add or to post text, I can still add to it a picture in animation and so forth. So I'm about to post something to my victorsbakeryuniverse.tumblr.com account and we'll look a little bit later. We can have multiple Tumblr blogs so we can quickly post. We can have a title and the text and tags. The title is actually optional so let's say this is our um, our very first post to Tumblr. So maybe I'm going to title it "Starting with Tumblr." In the actual text, I'll write, "We're happy to finally join Tumblr." 
maybe perhaps write what am I going to use Tumblr for? Am I going to be posting a bunch of exclusive photos? Am I going to add coupons? Am I going to add recipes here that you can't find anywhere else? Let me say follow us for exclusive recipes. You won't see these recipes on Twitter, you won't see them on my main website, you'll only see them on Tumblr. I can select some text such as exclusive. So if you select some text, you get the pop-up to edit, to style. We have bold, italics, we can do headings or headline. We can add links, strike through, bullet points, numbers, and block quotes. So let's say italics. So now the word italics is, I mean the word exclusive is emphasized with italics. I'm going to press enter to get a new line. And what it said a moment ago was when you have an empty line before you've typed anything, you're going to get this plus symbol on the left to attach something. A photo, a video, a, an animated GIF, a, a dividing line, or a read more link. We saw that when we worked with WordPress. We might have a hundred words, but my first Ten words are going to be my teaser text and then read more. I don't think this is that useful for Tumblr because, again, Tumblr is really much more about short attention spans. And it's a lot like a social network in that you, you're not going to give the whole cow away here. You're just going to give away some milk, and if they want more, they come back to the main site. So I don't use this read more very much. But it is useful to add these other things such as GIF, so here, this is very unique. They just added it to Tumblr recently. They've added the ability to, to attach an animation to your text. So, okay, someone reads this. They don't pay too much attention because it's just text. But this is one tactic. You can click the plus, click on GIF animations, search for a, search for a, a keyword of animations, like happy, let's say this one. You're going to say, wait a minute, that's the official Disney Pixar movie in Inside Out. Can I use that copyrighted image? Short answer is yes. In Tumblr, you can. Tumblr is like a weird gray limbo area of, uh, of sharing content. So if I do it this way through the official Tumblr system, I'll be okay. If I was writing this on my own blog post, I mean on my own blog site, and I went to Disney.com and I downloaded their graphic and then put it on my site, that could be problematic. But here, built into the Tumblr platform, it's okay. So now I've upgraded my post here to a much more Tumblr-friendly post. Got some text, which is nice. But then I've got an animated graphic, and animated graphics nowadays, and an emoji, which are those little cute icons, that's uh, so common nowadays to use on online and on social media that you almost seem like you're not, you're not with it. You're not, you don't know what you're doing unless you incorporate some of that emoji or animated gifs. This has a link back to the originator, so again, this is why it would be okay, because it has a link to who first posted it and where it came from. And then I'm going to add here under tags. What are some keywords that I can think about to possibly get found if people search? say um, my company is about cookies so I'm gonna start typing cookies and it'll suggest some popular ones so if if a suggestion does apply to your company I would use it so here it's got cookie and cookies in in tumblr I wouldn't really worry about 
how many tags is too many. Uh, to some degree, having 10 or 12 tags is okay on Tumblr, as opposed to the other networks where too many tags eventually is, is spammy. Here on Tumblr, it's okay to fill in a bunch of tags that relate, of course. I'm not going to add the tag Justin Bieber here, because he's popular at the moment. He released a new album, I guess. But I'm not going to add his name as a tag just because he's popular to try to ride on that popularity. I'm still going to add tags related to what my business is about. San Diego. Bakery. So I'll click Post. And now all my zero followers saw that. All my audience of none saw that. But the tactic that I talk about in my social media class is we want to post some content to no one first, and then start to build an audience. So I would suggest, because it's got a lot of aspects of social media, I would suggest to post three to five posts about any of these kinds of posts, three to five posts, even though I have no one paying attention, I want to add three or three to five of them, text, photo, anything, three to five posts, put in some tags and such. Once I've got some content, then I'll go through the process of doing some searching to try to get followers and activity. You have to uh, you have to you wrote the title in the text. You have to press enter, and it has to be on an empty line, and then you should see the little plus. Is that what you mean? Oh, I see. That's where you go. Yeah, it has to be on its own empty line. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I, I keep mine on, instead of post, I put it on a uh, save as draft, but now I'm not really sure how to find it once I've saved it as well. Your drafts, where are your drafts saved? <laughs> um, let me get back to that. It is saved somewhere. I try to look on that little, uh, that little account icon. It might say drafts there, or if not, we'll, we'll find it a little later. Okay. But it, it, it is saved somewhere. So let's say I'm going to add another, another post, this time a link. So if I click on link, it says, okay, type or paste your URL here. Let's say I want to link over to my, to, my, uh, to my shop. I'm just going to borrow. It doesn't relate, but I'm going to... Um, I'm going to get a blog post from my website. I need an address to display. So if I have a if I have a link that I want to share, I could put in, you know, victorsbakery.com, sure. But I really should put in an address of s some uh, unique targeted spot on my website. So for example, I'm pasting this. I'm pasting that address from one of the blog posts of my site. And what it did was it was smart enough to follow the link, take a graphic from my link and put it as part of my post, and take the text of that post, the very beginning of it, and put it there. Look at that. It did all the work for me. It put in a nice graphic. It put in the text. I can still further add a caption, a description, and tags. But that all came from copying the link on my website and choosing on Tumblr to share a link. It creates a nice little preview for it. Better yet, it automatically has a link back to my original post. So that could drive traffic back to my website. Let's say I have victorsbakery.com slash shop slash Halloween cupcake 
let's say I'm selling an exclusive Halloween cupcake this month on my site. If I take that address and paste it here and I share it here on Tumblr as a link, it will take the photo, take the text, and then it'll be part of the Tumblr platform ecosystem. And when people search Halloween cupcakes, they might find my post, which then takes them back to my website to sell them that Halloween cupcake. I would also add tags, of course. It already gave me a tag of WordPress. Looks good. But I'm going to also add tag blog. Maybe blogging. I can actually do... I'm used to perhaps on tags and hashtags that they have to be one word. But on Tumblr, it can be how to blog. That can be a complete hashtag with spaces. Hashtag how to blog. I can also have it how to blog. The point is that on Tumblr I can use spaces within my hashtags. So that's how people would be searching in Tumblr. This is really the only place um, where I can use hashtags like this. On every other social network, my hashtags have to be one word with no spaces, but here I can use spaces. Yes? If somebody searches how to blog with spaces, will the one without spaces also come up, or should we put both of them? You should put both to cover the bases, because how to blog with no spaces is one uh, search result, and how to blog with spaces is another. So you would, in theory, get separate results. So if you use them both, you cover all the bases. blogging tips. Okay, so that was, that's about to be my, my I'm, like I said, my goal, three to five. So let's say I'm going to do three. This is my second post out of, out of my goal of three. And I have the ability to simply post it right now, but if you click on this little triangle, you actually then have other ways to post. We have something called the queue, which is very cool, which I'll talk about soon. Save it as a draft to get back to it later. Post it private, privately so that not anyone can see it unless they have a link to it. And schedule. That's really nice too. I can go to schedule, and I can write here, post this next Tuesday at 10 a.m. I kind of don't like that it is way too mushy in its dates and times. It kind of wants you to write it like a person, which is weird to me. I want to write, you know, October 2nd, 7 p.m. I think I can. But anyway, I can schedule it kind of like WordPress. I can set up a bunch of posts that will then get published. Well, if on Tumblr my goal is to post like once a day, it's annoying for me to click schedule and schedule and schedule. That's why they have something called the queue. Adding something to my queue, and on another screen we set up the queue, but adding something to my queue will automatically post for me on a regular basis. I don't have to figure out tomorrow at 3, Thursday at 7, Sunday at whatever. I add it to my queue, and then this will put it in my, in my queue, in my, in my line of content, and it will automatically post on a regular basis. On another screen, we'll see, well, how is my queue currently set up? Because at the beginning, your queue, I think, is set up for posting 10 things per day. So if I put 10 things expecting something will be added once a day, no, you're going to burn through those 10 posts in one day. I believe that's what the default is. So I'm not going to set this to queue just yet, just a regular old post. But the queue is very useful, and not until, however, we, we, we fully set it up. And that's on a separate screen, so we'll get to it. But I'm just going to select post now, click post. And now there it goes out into the world.
So then I've got also uh, audio, and it says search for a song or paste a URL. This is a new feature where you can search for a song and then it will automatically get embedded into your into your posts. Is that what? Search for a song you go to GLM. No. If it's a song you're going to be posting right here. Uh, it's not that you attach it to a post, it's that before you create a post, you click on this, you click on the audio. Yes, after you post your current post, then you're going to create a new post and your new post will be audio. So let's say I have a I have a some sound elsewhere. If I have the address of my sound, it's supposed to let me copy that. Copy that address and I can then post it as a sound. So let's say I'm going to attach this, I'm going to post this sound. How can I do it in the, in the context of my Victor's Bakery? Well, I found this song, I found this, uh, this piece, and I'm going to write um, perfect music to bake by. And let's see some tags. Uh, baking inspiration inspirational And I'll post it. So I've already posted three things. That's a very good starting point. But now I've got some content. Notice I'm not uh, spending all of the time like I would with WordPress to <clears throat> perfectly craft something with a lot of meaning and proofreading like I would on WordPress here. <clears throat> It's a lot about the multimedia, some picture, some text, maybe some sound. Posting it, hopefully, to get followers, to get people to come back to my site.
So here's what we'll do. Let's, uh, let, let me give you a few minutes for you to think about, I'm not going to explain every one of these, you try some of these. You try a few of these. Try to get those three to five blog posts. Um, we'll take a few minutes and then we'll take a break and when we come back, well, another aspect of having an effective blog on Tumblr is, one, I need the content, but two, I also need to have a good profile. Because right now this is my profile here. I've got this little sleepy cube. You might have some other shape or something there, but I want my logo there. I want my biography so that people can read what my blog is about. I want to brand and style my blog so that people will care to follow it instead of just having this generic brand new fresh out of the box Tumblr site. So let's take a, it's 11.42, let's take a couple minutes, maybe until 11.45, think about writing a few things, posting a few things, and then from 11.45 we'll take a break to 11.55. When we come back we'll talk about editing our, our, our profile and then further how to use uh, Tumblr.